Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and today I'm going to be using my American buttercream. Yes, you heard right, not Italian today. I'm using American just because when I'm doing a carved cake, I need something that's a little bit more stiff. So I'm going with my American buttercream. What I'm doing first to carve this cake is I'm going to be cutting off this top portion, which I'm going to make into cake pops. If you want to see how I make all of my cake tops into cake pops or cake skulls, you can go ahead and check out that video in the right hand corner. Now I don't end up using a lot of this cake and this is a huge tip number one with all of my pricing. The reason that carved cakes are very expensive are because you can't actually bake the perfect amount of cake. You're always going to have some left over. So do keep that in mind when you're pricing your carved cake. And don't forget, I will provide a pricing guide just like I always do at the very end of this video. If you're just starting out with carved cakes, then this fish cake is a great place to start because it's not too, too difficult. It's really just a little bit of simplistic carving. I'm looking at a picture of a rainbow trout and I realize that a rainbow trout is a little bit thinner and a little bit more slender than this particular cake that I'm making. But this is also the other thing with carved cakes. So this is something that you really want to guide your clients through as you're coming up with a design for a carved cake. I really like to make sure that people know that the proportions might be just a little bit off so that they're getting enough cake to actually serve their guests and utilize it for what they need to utilize it for. If somebody was really insistent on having the correct proportions, then I would just make sure that they knew that majority of it would not be cake and a lot of it would be modeling chocolate because that's just the way it would go. Now, as you can see with this, I crumb coated it a couple times. The reason is, is because I kind of create that rounded shape with the buttercream. You can do this with your knife, but again, I'm trying to conserve the amount of cake that is actually there. So I rather kind of carve and mold and sculpt with this buttercream. And again, this is why I went with American. Italian meringue can do this too. I just find that with American, it's a little bit easier and it forms this crust that I need when I'm working with my modeling chocolate. Now again, you don't have to use it, but I just find it a little bit easier because you can be a little bit more aggressive with everything. I place that in the fridge overnight, though that's not completely necessary. Probably about 30 to 40 minutes would do the trick. And then you'll notice that I did cut off a little bit more near the tail portion. The reason is just because I wanted that to be a little bit more realistic. So I cut off part of that cake there, and then I'm going and covering this with my modeling chocolate. And yes, Satin Ice sent me this glorious modeling chocolate in another package that I'm going to share with you guys in a very, very near future video. Now, now, I love that they sent me ivory because ivory allows me to airbrush this whatever color I want. It's also just such a beautiful color. I feel like often I go for the bright white, but ivory is so beautiful for bridal stuff too. Now, after I cover the whole thing in modeling chocolate, and I make that kind of thick, not too, too thick though, but what I am going to be doing is I'm going to be sculpting this with my hands, so certain places are going to get thinned out a little bit more. And then I'm going in with my tool and I am carving and I'm carving all of those details in. Now the face is actually pretty simplistic. There's not too much going on. You have a little bit of the gill and the cheek area up there and then you also have the eye. So I'm just going to leave that socket just like that and I'm going to work on creating the texture for the rest of the body. Now I'm not really sure if that is a fish texture that that's supposed to be used for but that was in my big haul that I received. If you want to check out that video you can go ahead and check that out in the right hand corner. Then I'm going in with this other tool and creating some scales that kind of pop out just a little bit more just to add a little bit more texture there. Now when you are working with modeling chocolate, it tends to get a little bit melty, especially if you have hot hands. So I'm just gonna let that rest for a minute before I play around with that some more. So what I'm doing here is I'm covering this board with again, some more of that modeling chocolate. And all I'm doing here is I'm going to create a wood grain pattern. This is supposed to look like when you have your fish on a wooden plaque. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm just going to create some texture. Now I actually tried to use that little pattern mat beside me there, but I didn't find that that was quite the right texture. Because that has kind of wooden beams laid into it, it doesn't really go with the look that I wanted. I wanted this to kind of look like a wooden plank that has been made all shiny and nice for a plaque. So all I'm doing is I'm creating just a few knot holes. You don't want too, too many or it starts to look a little unrealistic and then you just got too many knot holes all over your wooden board. So three is good for me and then some of that will get covered up as well. 
Now what I'm doing is I'm creating the tail portion. Now, as you saw, my fish didn't actually have a tail yet, so I need to create this. Now I want this tail to stick up a little bit more. I would say this is kind of the beginning of what is difficult when it comes to carved cakes. So you really need to provide that structure inside. Now, to be truthful, I messed this up a few times because I didn't quite get the thickness of the modeling chocolate correct. Too thick and it's all gonna topple over, too thin and you see the wire. So definitely it is a little bit of a balance that you have to play around with. And even us as cake decorators that do this often, you still make mistakes because you don't know every single thing about different structures that you're trying. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create all of that definition in the tail. When I look at a rainbow trout tail, it's very much like this it's all fanned but it's also quite perfect at the same time now is the fun part where I get to try my airbrushing skills so first before I put on any of the fins I'm actually going to airbrush this all in silver the reason is because when I look at the fins they don't quite have the same silverish quality it's a little bit more green and a little bit more black though there is a tinge of silver so first I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna go ahead and create the fins and the fins I feel is what brings this cake all together now when I first started cake decorating I really felt like I had to roll everything out nice and thin cut everything out and then wait forever for things to dry or harden but I have changed my ways so when I make little details like this that can easily stand up on their own the trick is to make it just a little bit thicker and then that way I can just adhere it to the cake right away it's not going to flop over on me. It's going to maintain its shape. And truthfully, this is the thickness of a fin. I will say that that front fin there is quite, quite thin on an actual fish. So if you wanted to go that little step further, you could definitely do that with rice paper, which would also create a super, super realistic look, especially once it's all painted. Now I'm going in and I'm doing the airbrushing. Now this is so, so fun, but you have to be so, so sparing. So when I'm looking at a picture of a rainbow trout, I see that it has kind of a pinkish greenish glow so it's really important just to put a little tiny drop of that pink airbrush into your airbrush machine and when I'm airbrushing I never fully hold down the trigger unless I'm doing a solid solid color all the way around and I know that it's going to be very punchy with the color if I'm trying to do a little bit of shading or trying to do a little bit of realism I've got just a little slight touch on that trigger or else everything is going to come spraying out and you're going to see those kind of airbrush lines you know if you've ever spray painted or anything like that you kind of get these circular patterns going on so you definitely want to avoid that now we definitely aren't finished airbrushing that fish but the reason is I'm taking a little pause so that I can make sure that no beading occurs I find that if I overspray things and I oversaturate with color and there's too much liquid on there then I get a little beading on there so I want to avoid that I'm just going to let that rest for a sec and then I'm gonna move on to my wood grade pattern and I'm really just using one solid brown color for this but I'm just kind of utilizing the fact that the board itself was already ivory to begin with which some wood grain patterns already are so I'm just going in with a little bit of brown notice that I started on the edges this makes sure that that overspray that you get just naturally from airbrushing kind of gently mists the inside and then that way you're getting a more realistic glow from your wood grain and then I'm going in and I'm creating a little bit more darkness here and there wherever I see fit and keep in mind that your fish is going to cover up a lot of this now this little gadget I got from the dollar store from my friend she just saw it and she thought of me and I never thought that I would use it but wow wasn't it useful for transferring that over and the reason that I don't create directly on that wooden board is because I'm doing airbrushing on that fish really far down the body and I don't want to get any of that silver on my board so that's why I did the transfer I never really understood why people transferred things over from board to board but that is my reason for doing so now when creating this eye I wanted to make this realistic I think I could have done even better if I had used something like isomalt for the eyeball that would have looked really really realistic and then I was also going to add some corn syrup on there just to give it that glazed look so you can do that too I ended up not doing that I just wanted to leave it as is but if you wanted to go that extra step further definitely do that and then I'm just taking some edible black food gel and I'm dotting all along here and I do tend to look at pictures quite a bit the picture that I'm looking at is just a bird's eye view of the rainbow trout there's lots of different types of pictures that you need to look at whenever you're making a carved cake 
Now with carved cakes in general, I flip flop back and forth between looking at actual cake versions of things and looking at the real versions of things. But whenever I'm doing a realistic cake, I have to look at the realistic thing or else I just find I can't wrap my head around what it is that I'm supposed to do. I also like to look at several angles, especially if it's a standing up carved cake, because sometimes you just can't see what the back of something looks like. So definitely multiple angles. But for this particular cake, I was able to just look at one photo and get that job done. Now let's get into the pricing of this cake. Now if you guys are new here, once again, my pricing is very high because I live in a very expensive province in Canada in one of the most expensive cities in the world. So in order to really get a grasp on my pricing, it's best if you watch a series of videos where I provide the different pricing and then you can see my pricing differences between different cakes. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!